global capitalism. It's meant to be a higher form of development. Uh, it's meant to uh, bring economic growth that will eventually trickle down to everybody. It's meant to bring prosperity, modernity to everybody's lives. India has historically been a very unequal society. It's had the persistence of caste discrimination. It's had discrimination based on tribe, on religion. So with these new forms of economic growth being introduced within India, it's been a really interesting place to think about questions of inequality, uh, discrimination and oppression and its relationship to economic growth and capitalism. India has historically seen a form of social discrimination which has been religiously inscribed. It's been based on ideas of ritual purity and pollution. So some groups are considered lower than others because of where they are on the caste system. And where they are on the caste system means that they take in the pollution of the castes above them. So Dalits who are historically called untouchables were at the bottom of the caste hierarchies. They were seen as being so impure that they couldn't be touched. And in many parts of the country were agricultural serfs. The situation of the tribes is slightly different, the Adivasis as they are now called. They had historically moved away from the oppression that they were faced with and they moved and escaped to the hills and forests of India. Our team of researchers lived in different parts of the country for more than a year to understand the realities of their situation from a bottom-up perspective. And through this perspective, we're revealing the social processes that lie behind the figures of inequality. Through that long-term field-based research, we have identified you know, these three social processes that lie behind the discrimination faced by Adivasis and Dalits in India today. When capitalism has been introduced in the way it has in India, what you find is that those people that were powerful, the powerful groups, tried to maintain their powerful positions in the new economies at the expense of those that were below them in the new hierarchies. If you look at labour hierarchies in India, across the country, it is Dalits and Adivasis that are doing the worst work, labour building bricks for the construction boom, plucking tea leaves for the global tea industry, plucking the cotton for the international garment industry. Labour migration has historically been used as a way to cheapen labour. People are being moved across the country for six to eight months of the year to work in the informal economy, uh, which makes up 92% um, of the Indian uh, workforce. The conditions of their work are really miserable. You know, they, they're paid a pittance. They're hired through labour contractors on zero hours contracts at a moment's notice. They are living in slums with no sanitation, no electricity, no running water, when the factories right next to them, of course, will be fully powered. People at the bottom of the hierarchies are used against each other. So different caste groups are used to undercut the labor power of castes that are slightly higher up the scale in the hierarchy. So Adivasis, for example, are usually used to undercut the power of the labor power of Dalits. So if the labourers in one place go on strike against the terms and conditions of their work, another group can be easily brought in to replace them. So for instance you find in the tea plantations of Kerala where Dalits were brought to do indentured labour for the British colonial tea planters, now what is happening is that these Dalits are being moved out of the tea economy. The people that are being brought in place of them are Adivasis from the central and eastern Indian states. One thinks that you know, things like caste or race or ethnicity doesn't matter under capitalism and that it's you know, class exploitation or labour exploitation which is, which is the most important factor. But in fact, 
when you look on the ground, they're facing oppression based on the fact of who they are because they're low caste or low tribe or from a particular race or particular ethnicity and from the fact that they're women as opposed to men and that is intermingled or completely cut across by the class relations. These class, caste, tribe, race, gender are all intertwined. You can't separate them and they're more than you know the sum of the parts. In fact, we're all complicit in the situation that poor people across the globe find themselves in because the world is a global economy. The products they're making in India are the products that we consume here. India is a home to the world's longest standing armed revolutionary movement. It's been going on within the country for 50 years. They say they're fighting against inequality and for a communist society. There is lots of protest across the country in various different ways, uh, different kinds of groups mobilizing different people. That hope is coming from the people who are suffering at the hands of this exploitation and oppression. We should all take hope from these struggles from below, the struggles on the ground against inequality.